So, well, welcome, Happy Father's Day. Uh, happy Father's or Happy Father's Day to all fathers. I just hope that uh, you will have a great time with your family, and your family will have a great time with you. So praise the Lord. We know there's a lot of fathers out there that aren't really good fathers, and that's a bad situation. So we pray that you have a good relationship with them, and if they're still alive, uh, ours have passed away already. So we just remember, we also remember our Heavenly Father this day, and know that he's doing some awesome things right now, some fantastic things, tremendous things. Even in the chaotic moments that we're having, there's great things that are happening. So we just praise his name and worship him. So. As I was thinking about today, one of the greatest war tactics the devil has is to remove the father from the home. It's one of the greatest tactics he can get is to remove the father from the home. hate to say it, in our society there's a lot of fatherless homes. It causes great problems. There was a man that was in uh, Married for Life a long time ago. He was talking about a story about his father and grandfather. And he said that they were in Germany in World War II. He said that Stalin and Hitler had done something. They took the gang members off the streets and said, we'll give you guns and we'll put you in the military and we'll give you authority and we'll give you uniforms and uh, you can do whatever you want to do. These are fatherless kids that are out there. And that became the stuck Gestapo. The other thing was he started to call the land the father country. If you look at everything else, generally each country is called the mother country, except for Germany or Russia. It was called the father country. And the reason was trying to fill the void of the fatherless in those people and these young men that were there. We have so many people today that have fatherlessness. It's unbelievable. The void of the father is terrible. And the enemy knows that if he can keep that going, he's got it made in the shade. He's, he's doing a lot of damage and harm to a lot of people, to families, to kids, to situations. So if we can start to remember that we need to get the fathers back in the homes and pray and just ask God to bring them back and get them to where they're willing to go and the Lord has had different movements. Uh, Promise Keeper was one that started to help to bring some of the fathers back and get them changed around. But uh, it didn't last all that long. It did last a while, and it was going good there for some time, but it dropped off. And So we just give God glory. But he said one day, they were in, in Germany, the father and grandfather, and he says one day the enemy's the, my, uh, army came into town. The grandfather was in a bell tower, had a kind of like a sniper rifle, and he would pick the soldiers off as you know, one by one until they found him and they blew the bell, bell tower up. But his father would lay in the field beside the road, and as a tank would come by, he would roll out on the road and get under the tank and put this. Uh, explosive, explosive, you know, bomb up on, on the bottom, attach it to it, then roll back out into the field. And the tanks would start blowing up, and they didn't know what, how they were blowing up. So finally they figured out where it was coming from, and they thought something, you know, somebody in that field, so they started just opening up on the field, and he was actually wounded and eventually imprisoned. And uh, while he was in prison, he said his mother, or his, you know, this is where his father found his wife or his mother was in prison and he said his, he would, his father at night would actually get a way of getting out of the camp and go listen to a, a, a home close that had the Radio Free Europe and how they were talking about how the army was advancing and getting closer and what was going on and then he would go back to the to the camp and then he would tell all the people how close things are happening what was going on and gave him some hope to be able to make it because it was happening and they were freed and uh, he said his father because of he was a fighter professional fighter who was in the best condition he ever was if he hadn't been in that condition he never would have made it so he was talking a lot about how his father and 
how he was strong and how he was a warrior and how he fought things off. And, and he had learned a lot from his father. And I was saying, wow, I said, that's quite a story to, to hear all that going on. So praise the Lord. We just praise God for fathers and, and uh, for their role in the family. And we pray that those who are not doing what they're supposed to the family will change and start to, God will convict their hearts on this day and, and bring them back in the place where they need to be. As you know, I usually don't do traditional stuff, I have a big Father Day event. So I was asking the Lord, I said, uh, I didn't know what to say this week. But I remember coming out of a dream and I was thinking about the dream and what was happening and what I was doing was I was walking around saying, are you walking in the flesh or the spirit? Are you walking in the flesh or the spirit? And I felt that I was supposed to ask that today. Are you walking in the flesh or are you walking in the spirit? And I thought that was kind of strange, but that's all I kept hearing. Are you walking in the flesh or are you walking in the spirit? And I said, wow, that's an awful easy one to teach on. It won't be much. I'll just say it and done and over and gone from there. Well, the Lord kept hitting me. I said, Lord, what do, you, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? What's going on? It just came back. Are you walking in the flesh? Or are you walking in the spirit? I didn't get any other answers. Are you walking in the flesh? Or are you walking in the spirit? I've gotten a more general understanding on why he's talking about it now. We need to make a decision on walking in the flesh or walking in the spirit. Which are you going to do? What is going to be more effective? Why is it going to be more effective? I went back to Second Chronicles 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Huh? Second. 5, 7? Oh, a second. Sorry. Second Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. See, walking by faith is the spirit walking by sight is the flesh if you come down to it I heard a song here or a teaching here a while back that what's happening is that we're trying to bring the unseen into the scene same thing as Thur as uh, Miles Monroe talked about in in uh, the kingdom kingdom of God what happens is there's an unseen and there's a scene. And the unseen put the scene on the scene. And the scene and the unseen was wanting the scene to bring the unseen into the scene. And it kind of throws you all off when you get through going all this way. And I'm not for sure exactly how it was stated, but it was that close. So are you walking in the unseen or are you walking in the scene? Let's put it that way. Walking by Faith, or are you walking by sight? Faith is the things unseen, the things hoped for. Sight is the things that you see. I took and I put down here. Are you walking in the spirit or are you walking in the flesh? This is a question the Lord wants you to know. I Have I said that before? It's like the Lord just keeps reminding me, keeps hitting me. You know, it's, it's like a song... There's songs out there that you start to sing and then later on you're driving down the road or you're doing something and all of a sudden that song pops back up in you and it's just going through your mind and it just kind of keeps reminding you. I think this is what the Lord wants to have done today. He wants to put in you, are you walking by faith or are you walking by sight? In this season, it's going to be so easy to walk by sight. Maybe not as easy to walk by faith. Because of the things that are happening, the things that are going to go on. See, when you're walking in the Spirit, you're walking in love. When you're walking in the Spirit, you're walking in love. Walking in the flesh, you're walking in your understanding, desires, wills, wants, etc. 
When you're walking in the flesh, you're walking in your understanding, your desires, your wills, your wants, etc. Most people walk that way. Very, very few people have taken stop to see what the unseen would want to do in that situation. It is so easy to get into that going by sight and not by faith in areas. Time's coming where we have to stand a lot by faith, by understanding. And you might say, well, that's kind of hard to do. I'm going to put it this way. I like watching action programs. You put me around some other programs and I'll get lawed out. I'll just kind of like, just kind of fall back here. Give me an action movie and I'll pop up again. Problem is, the action movies turned into too much violence. Today, you know, you used to watch A Team way back when. That was fun. He was always beating up the bad guys. They were always, and there didn't see much blood, and there didn't see many people being killed. It was just, it was good. It was, it was action. But there wasn't much violence. There was some violence, but not, I mean, even cartoons have some violence. But the fact is, it wasn't as extensive as it is today. But I'm still kind of watching some action programs. And they're getting more violent. Don't like the violence. The violence is not good. God hates violence. So the fact is, why are you still watching? Because I like to. Walking by sight, not by faith. Walking by sight, not by faith. But it surprised me what really concerned what was going on, and this is why I'm saying this, is because one day I was watching an action show and I caught myself thinking, not saying, not wanting. I said, that guy's just going to cause you problems. Kill him, get rid of him. He don't need to be here anymore. Because if you don't, he'll come back and get you later. I've seen so many people have died and they come back and they kill him. I'm thinking, now wait a minute, don't turn your back on him because it's going to, you know, because see, I've been watching this so much, it's starting to become a fruit in my spirit. It was planting those things in my heart. And that frustration was starting to come up through me. It didn't come out of my mouth. What's in the heart comes out of the mouth. Didn't come out of me, but it was in my thought. And I says, uh-oh, I got a problem. I have a problem. Why am I thinking that? I've never thought that in my life. I've seen this all the time in my life, and I've never once had that thought. See, there was a planning of what I was seeing going into my heart. Many times I've watched some of the action movies, and my heart is singing. It's singing some of these songs. Guys are going to get the praise. The guys are shooting each other. Guys are going to get the praise. I mean, there's a war going on between my spirit and my flesh. And I'm sitting here. I'm joining the flesh. But the spirit's saying, you ain't doing things right. Get back into the move. Come on, move back into where you're supposed to be. Because the spirit's crying out inside of me. And I'm still watching my flesh. I'm dealing with this issue. The Lord's dealing with me. He's hitting me. But this, that's the way it is. That's that war. You got a song rising up in sun. It's probably the spirit of God trying to get you changed around because you're doing something that's not right. And he's trying to help you. I'm still, I mean, I, I got four or five songs going on. One stops, the next one pops right back up. I said, finally got a hold of that. And I said, okay, Lord, I see what's going on, so I have to make a decision. Why? Because I was walking by flesh and not by flesh. The spirit. Walking by sight and not faith. I said, wow. I wasn't even going to put that out, but the Lord said I had to. So I said, it's a good example of what goes on. And then I took and I says, okay. We have a lot of issues that happen in your work in your home, around people, things that go on. When you complain about a problem or a situation, what is not right, you are walking in the flesh. 
Huh? What do you mean? Many people may say, well, that is wrong. That is the flesh. It is by sight that causes your emotion to rise up. I am not saying that you aren't wrong because you probably are right. But the difference is, are you walking in faith? Or are you walking in sight? Are you seeing it from the sight side, which the emotion comes up and starts to cause a lot of problems? Or are you looking at it from the faith side that you're starting to see what's really going on and how to resolve the issue? Because anytime you start complaining, God loves us. It's faithful, a cheerful complainer, right? It's all the way through the word. It's got to be. Everybody, when people start complaining, it's got to be in there because we're just, we're just following the word. God loves a faithful complainer. Hmm? Complaining is not of God. I was very amazed when I was watching, I was looking back, and I had that prophecy last week, and it said the hordes of hells are being released. Brought me right back to what the Lord gave me way back in the 90s and brought it back here lately again about the final quest where they're talking about the hordes of hell. And I went back and I took some and looked at them. And I know I was kind of said, well, you got to be careful when you go back in there because it's not really of the, the, the word of God. And, and, and the thing is, but you know what? There's a lot of truth there. I'm not saying everybody's going to get in and find it. But for me, it's what I need to know and understand to be able to help to, you know, to fight against what's going on in today's society. And what I found out was, you know, Rick Joyner was talking about he climbed the mountain, and every mountain he talked about a level. Every level has a different understanding of where your growth is as you grow in the Lord. And he says as they kept going, they finally got to the one which was Galatians 2.20. He says, when he died to self, it's not I, but Christ in me. He said he caught up with faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. And something changed in him when he was in and was around faith, hope, and love. Something changed. I mean, this really got me. Because it was a revelation from the Lord, I'm saying, and it's for this meeting today. And I says, wow, I was thinking of something else, but he says, use it today. Because when you get hooked up with faith, hope, and love, you're walking in the Spirit. Faith, hope, and love, you're walking in the Spirit. When you start to do that, it changes your outlook. It changes your thought pattern. It changes your heart towards that situation. Now, I'm going to say there's still situations you have to speak out and say something about the situation for people to know. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that people see something and they say it's wrong. No, I'm not saying that you're not right or you're not wrong or you know, you're not right. But the fact is, how you're dealing with that issue is whether you're walking in faith or you're walking by sight. Are you walking in the spirit with faith, hope, and love? In other words, you see a situation, it's, in, it's impossible. The situation is impossible. It is never going to change in your fleshly eyes. When you look at it sight-wise, you step over into the faith or in the spirit, and guess what? There's hope. You have faith that it's going to change. You have hope that it's going to go forth, and you love that situation of the person that's there. The problem is very few people get into that. People stay in the flesh realm more, in the sight realm more. This is kind of a simple type of a teaching, but it's one as the Lord's really putting out right now. As the, the, all of the <clears throat> things that are happening in the world today, think about it. It kind of wonders what's going on when you get into the faith. 
you start to see the faith, hope, and the love. You don't see it if you're in the flesh. Send the military in and take them all out. Just easier to get rid of them now than later. All they do is cause problems. That's the flesh side. The hope says, you know, they're just bound up by demonic spirits. If we came together and start to bind up those demonic spirits and start to believe in God to change it and ask him to walk in there and do something, you might be surprised they start to change. Prophecy came out for Kent Christmas says that many of the people in the homosexual areas are going to be changed because God is going to fall upon them and take and bind up those spirits that are bound up, causing them to be bound up and remove them. He said the ones that the children are, you know, the devil thinks he's got the children. The same thing, God in his infinite mercy is going to come in and bind up those spirits that are binding up the children and remove them so that the power of God can come in and they can change. We can't see that if we're walking in the flesh. It won't, you won't believe it if you're walking in the flesh. But if you're walking in the spirit with faith, faith that God can do it, faith that God will do it, hope and love. It's just like with our daughter Sally, our kids. I've always prayed Deuteronomy 28. I said, Father, I don't care what happens. I prefer that they have a good life. But if they do not, by the end of their life, no matter what, your word says they will be blessed because they're my seed. Even though she's not my physical seed, spiritually, I have a spiritual authority over her. And in the last minute, the Lord spoke to me and said that she cried out to God and said, Lord, help me. And he took her home. Because of the prayer and the faith and the word that came forth. I didn't walk in the flesh. If I walked in the sight, I guarantee you what, she would probably not be there. Because I wouldn't have been praying for her. Because there's no hope for her. I tried. We worked with her. We had things happen. It did not work. Because I, if you look at it from the flesh, when we've had couples that we've worked with, things would go crazy. And I'd say, Lord in the flesh there is nothing that can be done there is nothing that's going to help this it is done it's over i wash my hands of it because there's nothing 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 then i get in the flesh and there's nothing i can do get rid of them it's over with they don't want to change nothing's going to happen but then i sit there and say father you take care of it because i can't See, I get out of the flesh and I get into the, into the faith, into the spirit. You know what? I sit back here how many times I cannot tell you. I watched within a short period of time. God changed that situation. I remember a, a lady that had a testimony. She married a guy. And he was supposedly a great guy. And, and he had the word. He knew the word. And she thought he was an awesome Christian. And she wanted to do a lot of things for God. And, and after she got married, she started, she says, I, forget, I didn't see the warning signs. He was a drunk. He was gone all the time. Just, she couldn't get anything done. She prayed, she prayed, she prayed. She broke that thing. She did this, she did that. Nothing happened for four years in her marriage. I didn't know her. I just, I'd seen a testimony of this is all it was. And all of a sudden she says, God, I've had it. It's your problem now. And within a month, the guy got saved and became an elder and deacon in the church as he went along. When you give it up, God's going to take it over. But we walk around in the flesh and seeing we want this, we want that. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. But the problem is when you give it over to God, yes, there's things that you still have to do. I'm not denying that. But the problem was we continually looking at the problem instead of at the purpose 
of what's going to happen. The purpose is giving it to God and letting him show you or teach you or change the situation at hand. Same thing with married for life. There was this one lady that was saying that she had a, an issue with her husband or had an issue she had to talk to her husband and he had one of those older uh, copy machines. You know, it's the one that you roll around. Dad used to have one. They have a thing you typed off on an old typewriter and you put it on this round drum and then you put ink in it and then you run the paper through and then you run it like this and you run off bulletins. That's what he's bulleting. And, and she says he was doing that and the machine wasn't too good and he had a lot of problems and he was not too happy to be around when that was happening. And, he's, and she stopped and she said, Lord... Being in the flesh, if you look, I, I can't get a hold of him. I don't want to talk to him. He is miserable. I just know he's going to blow up and go crazy because of everything that's going on. He's not going to want to hear what i got to tell him because of what's going on in there. She didn't say that. She says, God, I need to talk to my husband. Thank you for making a way. About five minutes later, he came out the door. He said, I'm just going to take a break. I, said, I just can't. Blah, blah, blah. And she just waited a little bit. And she says, honey, I got to talk to you. He calmed down a little bit. And he says, okay, what do you got? And he told her. And it was, it was perfect. Exactly what she had to find out. She didn't go by the flesh. She went by the faith, by the spirit. Thurman or Cheryl said the same thing. But Lord, don't hurt him too bad. Don't hurt him too bad. Got his finger smashed. Why? Because he was nasty to her. She wasn't in the flesh. She was in the spirit. She didn't go by sight. She went by faith. This is what the Lord's saying. In this season, we need to be less flesh, more faith. Less flesh, more spirit. Quit looking at the things that need to be taken care of and start asking God, how are you going to do this? Or how do you want me to interject to do this? That's what this is all about today. I said, wow, this is interesting, Lord. I don't know how this is going to come out because I knew he was going to have to do it. Then, and I'll tell you another thing. I wouldn't normally say this, but I got a bag on my leg, which is for urine because I still have my catheter. What happened was the bag filled up. I have not had a day for the last month of having the, the bag ever fill up in one day. It's only about a fourth full. Today I was sitting there, didn't even notice it, and I got up here, and next thing I knew, it's full and ready to explode. And I'm thinking, now I gotta, I'm sitting up here, so I had to go in the bathroom. So I went in the bathroom, and as I started to open up the pit or the cockpit to, or the valve to drain it out it broke so I'm now I'm sitting here to trying to drain this thing and I can't and if you don't it goes up in your bladder and it hurts your liver I mean your kidneys so I mean here what am I going to do I'm saying what is this well Debbie came in and, and said can I help you so she helped me in a way to finally we got it opened enough to where it drained but then the valve slides sideways and it starts to shoot out the side of the valve I'm thinking now, wait a minute, I got a cap to put on the bottom to keep it from coming out, but now it's shooting through the valve. Well, now what are we going to do? So the, I could have gotten the flesh and, flesh and said, that's it, I'm done. I'm going home. I'm going to get a bag. Forget about it. It's over. But I said, no. I said, it'll work. God will provide and make it happen. And so it happened, and that's what happened in there. I just want to let you know. That's all it was. This, too, will be come to pass. There's just some things that are being worked on right now to make that happen. But the fact is coming down to one thing. Be prepared when things go wrong. Not to look at it from the flesh, but look at it from the spirit. The Lord didn't want, I mean, the devil doesn't want me to put this thing out. I thought it was such a simple little questionable, won't be very long 10 minutes and I'm, I'm out of here but the Lord's bringing it forth farther
One of the examples that I want to use right now, and that is Pastor Stephanie Moody, Apostle. Stephanie Moody came here to train the leadership. And she talked about a lot of different things, but then she got to a point where she set up a personality test. When she got through, there's four different personalities. And she had everybody separate into each group of the four different personalities, and she brought some, she talked about some things and so on and so forth. I didn't always believe, I, I, it was hard to believe that this person was in that group or this person was in that group. But it worked out because I was seeing, I learned why one person operated the way they operated because of their gifting, because of their personality according to that test. I don't know if you guys remember that or not, but that was quite interesting when that all happened. So I took and I said, hmm, well, what's happening is we don't always understand why people act the way they are but when you start to get that revelation knowledge on how and who they are then you'll start to understand why they act that way that's also walking from you know when you start dealing with a lot of people you have a lot of different viewpoints you have a lot of different thinkings you come up from the different nationalities from the different you know, ways that you grow up from all the things that happen in your life, everything, and, and everybody can come up with a different viewpoint. I mean, I've talked to one person, didn't say much, and they never came back, and I, and I finally found out that I offended them. I didn't even know how I offended them. There should have been no offense, but they were already offended. And boom, it was, they were gone because of that offense. And I'm thinking, what are you going to do with that? That's hard. So you just turn them over to God and let God deal with the issues. So, I mean, it's one of those situations that you, when you start to understand and you start to walk in the spirit more than the flesh, you're going to see things. And that's why we talked about um, Abraham and Sarah. And it said that both of them laughed and they analyzed, they calculated, and they came up with an answer. And the answer was this. The, is the biggest obstacle they have to overcome to receive the promise of God. If you can't get past that obstacle that your mind comes up with, you're not going to receive the promise of God. So the more you overcome the thinking that your mind is saying, which is the flesh, by seeing things, and you start to go into the spirit and you allow the, the Lord to show you the truth through the word of God, through whatever's going on, I said it, it's a, a tremendous thing. I've heard many people say that they see me up and walking. They've, they've seen, they know I'm going to be healed. And I agree, 100% I am. So I keep walking in that. I know that there's some things that I've got to change in order to make things happen that way too. And I'm going to do that too. So the fact is, the Lord, when I start getting out of the, the flesh, just seeing what's going on and moving into the spirit, God's going to give me more of the abilities to change and to do and, and to come where I need to be. By confronting the problem in the right way will help to change the problem, but not the root cause. Cause. It takes time. I can take and talk to somebody, and I can talk to somebody, and I can talk to somebody. That's good. Information is sometimes good, depending on if they want to hear it, if they want to know about it, and if they want to change. But what you do is you get in the spirit and you say, God, now it's yours. You do what you need to do. If I'm wrong, please show me. If something's happening that needs to be done, let me know. And watch God start to do some things differently that way. Because, see, that root cause is what we need to go after. More times than not, there's a reason things are happening because there's a root cause. And when you remove that root cause, find that root, and you get it out of there, then God has even a greater time of, of changing and bringing people to where we need to be. It's, it's just an awesome thing of, of getting God's uh, people set free, getting people set free in general. So I just want to say, what the Lord's word today is on Father's Day is, are you walking in the flesh or are you walking in the spirit the lord desires that you work in the spirit 
The more in the spirit, the less problems that you're going to have. Did I say it's not going to come and have, you're not are you going to have any problems? No. You'll still have problems. But the less you worry about your problems, the less you're concerned about your problems. Because you start to allow the Spirit of God to move on those problems and change them. So praise the Lord. I pray this word goes forth. It kind of goes along with the two examples about the pathway and, and also being unplugged. Because it all is working. I mean, I was sitting there saying, Lord, I understand that. And then when this thing happened, I'm thinking... Yeah, the devil doesn't want this to come out. He doesn't want you to think about walking. So simple. So simple. What's wrong, Lord? Oh, you're just walking in the flesh. Get out of the flesh. Get in the spirit. Watch what I can do for you. That's simple. Sometimes we don't always look at it that way. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We thank you for this blessed day. We ask for each and every one to be blessed on this Father's Day. We pray that all fathers will have a good time of being with their children and and just uh, enjoying enjoying them, Father. We thank you, Father. There are many children out there that are fatherless, and we ask, Father, that you will step in and and fill in that spot through the, your love and your peace and your joy by your Holy Spirit. We pray that people will come in to help under help them to achieve that as well. We pray, Father, that uh, the families, the marriages will come back together and start to be even more proficient in doing what we're supposed to be doing. We thank you, Father, for this beautiful time together. We ask, Lord, that you will continue to move this day. We give you full glory, honor, and praise in all things. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen.